Uh, hello. Our next speaker is uh, Free Ikanayaka. It, he is a member of the LXD at Canonical, and uh, he will present DQLite, a distributed embeddable database. Please welcome. Thank you very much. I guess you can hear me. Uh, so yeah, my name is Free. Uh, that's uh, the real name, uh, not a nick, as weird as it could sound. Uh, and, uh, as you mentioned, uh, I'm a member of the LexD team at Canonical. LexD is a container management uh, system for system containers. And uh, as part of it, uh, uh, we started a sub-project called DQLite when we had to uh, implement clustering in uh, LexD. So instead of, ha of having just one uh, uh, node running your containers, now you can have a cluster of them and it behaves uh, uh, in coherently in a consistent way. Um, we were using SQLite before, and so we thought it would be a good idea to keep using that mode. Uh, before I start, uh, um, how many of you do not know about uh, SQLite or SQLite? I don't see many hands raised, actually none, which uh, is expected. Uh, because yes, uh, SQLite is uh, one of the, probably the, the most uh, widely uh, used database in the world because of uh, embedded systems, uh, Android, uh, and, uh, and similar things. There, there are billions of, uh, of deployments. And um, it's a very solid code base, uh, very high quality, uh, with a core team of maintainers uh, that uh, has been keeping up uh, for, for more than 20 years now. Uh, there are many use cases for it. Uh, uh, so the, the SQLite author uh, advertises it uh, as a replacement of uh, FOpen in the sense that it's uh, as easy to use uh, as uh, uh, you know, a system call to open a file, but uh, in return uh, you get uh, a, a structured way to, to manage your data. So yeah, it's used in embedded devices, uh, in agents su such as uh, LexD, or in desktop applications, uh, for example, Firefox, uh, Chrome, or all use uh, that to organize uh, bookmarks and, and stuff like that, as you know. So what do you get with the DQLite that you don't get with the uh, SQLite? Uh, so well, that's high availability. Uh, the main problem with the uh, SQLite is, of course, uh, everything is local to your node, which is uh, a good thing because it simplifies everything, uh, things are faster, etc. But it's also a single point of failure. For example, in LexD, uh, if, you, if, if you put everything in one node, if you lose that single node, everything uh, uh, would be gone. Um, yeah, with, uh, with DQLite, uh, we distribute uh, uh, the, um, the data across all the nodes of the cluster. Uh, the data is replicated. So in case uh, of, uh, of failure of a node, uh, there are automatic mechanisms uh, for failover. And uh, as long as your client can connect to another node in the cluster, uh, you're good. So... Um, this is a very simple uh, diagram of the, the classic way of, of using uh, SQLite. So you, you have your application process. SQLite uh, is a C library that, that you link. Uh, depending on your uh, application language, you, you will use uh, bindings. So the original bindings are in C. And, uh, and if you have an external client, uh, either by an API or even command line, you, you, you can drive your application through it. With DQLite, the model is similar, uh, except that uh, you have uh, more than one node. Uh, so you have a cluster of processes. Uh, 
your, your, your application will run on different nodes. Each node typically run one instance of your application process. And instead of uh, talking to the SQLite API, you would uh, talk to the DQLite API. Uh, still, it's embedded in, in the process. DQLite is as well a C library uh, which gets linked to your process. Inside DQLite, uh, there is an engine which uses Raft to replicate the data and uh, SQLite actually to process the data, to, to offer you the SQLite uh, engine. Um, there's uh, an important difference in that with SQLite, uh, with the C API, you, you talk locally to your node. With DQLite, uh, since it's based on, on Raft, we, we can talk about this uh, uh, later. Uh, you will have to connect to the leader of the of the cluster. So, is there a, a pointer somewhere? I didn't ask. Okay. No. Anyway, um, you have to connect to the leader of the of the cluster, which can be any of those processes, and that leader. Uh, will will be the one actually serving uh, your queries. Um, so it, it retains, uh, DQLite retains uh, the embedded part of SQLite, but uh, th there's no way you can uh, keep the 100% local part. You need to go through the network. And, um, and this is, uh, and this is uh, one, one important uh, difference. Uh, should any of your uh, uh, processes die, uh, the data in, in your database is replicated, as I said, uh, and uh, your, uh, your process or your client, depending on where you put the logic, can connect to, to, to the new leader, can discover the new leader, and, and go on uh, uh, with the computation. Okay. Talk is cheap. Show me the code. This... Uh, it's a quote from Linus Torvalds. Uh, so I will uh, try to uh, show you um, a very simple uh, application. Uh, the, the goal is uh, uh, to, to demonstrate uh, that you can uh, write uh, a Go program uh, with uh, 132 lines of code and uh, using exclusively the standard lab library and uh, the Go bindings uh, for uh, DQLite. And uh, with that program, you actually get a uh, distributed uh, application with a distributed uh, database uh, and full tolerance, full full tolerance. So uh, the case study is uh, uh, just, uh, just to, to, to make things uh, you know, a bit more interesting, uh, uh, a medical device. So one of the use cases I think uh, uh, DQLite would have is with the devices, uh, IoT. Uh, you might want uh, uh, to, 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 to have redundancy in, in, in your devices. So in this case, uh, I picked a pulse oximeter, which I, I didn't know about before. <laughs> so for, for those of you that didn't, don't know as well, uh, it's uh, a device uh, uh, to measure uh, the oxygen saturation uh, in, in your blood, so how much uh, oxygen there is uh, in your blood. I don't know much about it, so almost anything, but uh, for, for the curious, uh, it works uh, with, with, uh, with a LED. Uh, it uh, emits light uh, uh, through your, your body at different uh, wavelengths. And since uh, the hemoglobin uh, in, your, in your blood as absorbs light differently depending uh, on whether it's bound to oxygen or not, the light will be as absorbed differently and there is um, uh, another, another component at, at, at the other end, a, light, uh, a diode that uh, essentially reads the amount of light that was uh, uh, that, that, that passed through, so you, you, can, uh, uh, you can deduce the, the, the amount of, um, of uh, oxygen in the, in the 
bound to a model bin. Um, the, the algorithm will be very simple. So we want to measure, uh, the, to perform this measurement at, the, uh, at regular intervals. So we, we keep an history of, um, of the percentage of oxygen in, in your blood uh, across, uh, across the time. And we want to expose an API so that we can, uh, we can inspect uh, uh, the average, uh, I don't know, in the last five minutes or one hour or whatever. Uh, the function to measure uh, uh, oxygen saturation is just a mock-up thing. So uh, we, we imagine we have this fancy hardware that does what I described. And uh, so it just returns a random value uh, between 95 and 100, which is uh, more or less uh, uh, the usual uh, uh, value that, that you find uh, in your body. Uh, this is the function uh, that we will use in the program. We initialize uh, the database. Uh, this, for those of you familiar with, uh, with Go, but uh, it's the same with the other bindings, uh, it just creates uh, uh, a table where we will store uh, the, the, the measurement uh, along with the, with the timestamp when the, the measurement was made. And, uh, and that's it. And we hope, as, as I said, uh, SQLite is, is very simple. You just have to open uh, the database as you would uh, open a file, and, and, and that's it. So th this part is uh, probably very familiar uh, uh, to, to the SQLite users uh, among you. Uh, then we have, of course, to, to save uh, uh, our measurements. So we have this persist saturation uh, function and we just, just perform an insert, a uh, simple insert uh, of, the, of the value that, that we read. And since the, the, the schema has a default current timestamp, the, the timestamp will be uh, saved uh, automatically. Uh, and finally, the last piece essentially of the, of the model of this little toy application is uh, to retrieve the average saturation, uh, and we just make a select query, uh, taking the average over the last number of uh, minutes or seconds uh, or hours. That's, uh, that that will be part of the of the query of the user. And that's basically it. You can put it all together. Uh, your main function will. Uh, uh, initialize the database. It starts a Go routine. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Go, Go routines are, you can think about that as a thread of computations that go on in parallel with the rest of the program. So this is a, an infinite uh, for loop uh, that sleeps for, for some seconds and then uh, uh, makes a new measurement and saves it to the database, to the, to the local database. And then we expose uh, uh, the, the, the service through, through, through the web uh, with, uh, with an HTTP handler, which just takes uh, the, the tail, uh, the tail parameter, which is uh, how many minutes or uh, seconds uh, you want to average uh, against and then it returns uh, the average in in, in that uh, uh, window of, of time. So that that's everything uh, you you need to do for for this toy implementation. Um, we can see it in action. Um, I can build the program. Um, wait. So this, this is uh, uh, the tags libsqlite uh, um, parameter. For those of you who know about Go, uh, is needed because the bindings, uh, uh, it's a way to tell the bindings, please use uh, the system uh, uh, shared library object instead of uh, compiling the whole thing into your uh, uh, executable. So it's, uh, it's a bit faster. And uh, I can then start the program. And if I perform a query, 
uh, asking for, for example, the last uh, five minutes of, uh, of value, I, I, I get the average back. This will be refreshed uh, every, uh, every 30 seconds or whatever. And so, and all the data is saved locally, as you might expect. Um, so we have the history of, man of uh, measurements locally in, uh, in your node. So as I mentioned before, this is simple and nice, but uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a real world, the imaginary real world uh, situation, what happens uh, if uh, the, the, the underlying storage media fails, uh, and so you, you don't have access anymore to your data, and maybe they, 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 they are critical for, for, for assessing the, the health of the patient or whatever. Or if you uh, need to do some, some maintenance uh, over your, your devices and you need to replace it, but you don't want to interrupt the, the monitoring or stuff like that. Or another thing could be that uh, the, the hardware that, that performs the measurement uh, has some issues, perhaps it, uh, it's in inaccurate, uh, maybe even in small ways. So you may want to perform uh, the measurements uh, uh, several times using several instances of the hardware and, 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 make, and uh, average the, the results to, to, to reduce the, 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 the error in, in case uh, one of them uh, is not uh, accurate. Uh, so in these cases, you want, uh, of course, uh, a cluster of, the, of, uh, of devices, and that's uh, a good use case for uh, DQLite. So you would run uh, uh, this, the DQLite uh, application in, uh, for example, three uh, uh, instances of your devices, three pulse uh, oximeters. Each oximeter uh, would independently make the measurement. It would save uh, uh, the measurement in the distributed database. And uh, yeah, even if uh, one of the of the of them dies, uh, it's still all good because uh, the otherwise the other uh, have replicated data and can still serve uh, uh, your query. So the changes uh, to the code that I just showed you, to you are, are minimal. One thing you need to do in your main function is to assign an identity to each of the, the instances of your application running in the cluster. Um, an ID, a numerical ID, which needs to be unique for, for each node. This is basically used by the underlying Raft engine. Um, very simply put to, to, to see which nodes have uh, um, replicated which data. Uh, so just, just pass an ID to, to your main function and uh, we will pass it to the uh, function that initializes uh, the database. In turn, the function that uh, initializes the database will need not just to, to connect to your, your local uh, SQLite. Instead, it needs to start the DQLite engine. As I mentioned before, there is some networking going on, and the DQLite engine running in your process, in your application process, is the one which will be in charge of this uh, network and which is completely uh, transparent to, to your application. So the start engine uh, function, which, which I will show you in the next slide, uh, will do that. Uh, there is another function called uh, join cluster. Uh, you need to, to tell DQLite essentially which nodes uh, are part uh, of your cluster. So this will just be essentially a, the, the easiest way to do it. We could talk about membership management uh, later on, but th in this case, uh, uh, each node essentially tries to join the node. If, 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 it, if it has already joined in the past, it's, it's just a no-op. And the last thing, the third one, 
is to register the driver. This is also uh, a Golang specific thing. So for those of you familiar, um, Go has a, a, a standard library package called uh, SQL. And you can um, register different drivers uh, for different database backends. Uh, so in this case, we want to register the DQLite driver. And we need to do it, to do it explicitly because some other libraries, they just uh, register their driver uh, um, transparently. For, for example, SQLite, uh, there is a single instance of the driver object which can be shared. But in, in our case, you need to instantiate the DQLite instance, so you need the reg to register the driver. Okay, this is mostly an implementation detail of, of Golang. Um, yeah, okay, you start the engine. So to start the DQLite engine, uh, you need uh, a couple of things. As I mentioned, you need uh, the ID that you will uh, use for the node. You need a network address. In this case, we just use a network address uh, which is derived from the, the ID. We just uh, append a number uh, to, the, to, the, to the port. Um, and you need a directory where uh, uh, you will save the, the data. So the data will not be saved in a regular uh, SQLite data, uh, database file. It, it will be saved uh, in the raft uh, uh, log. More about this uh, later. Then there, is, there are a couple of options that, that you probably want uh, to set. One is a bind address, uh, which is what I said. This will tell the DQLite engine please start uh, listening uh, to this uh, network address uh, and uh, all the traffic between nodes will, will, will go through, through that, uh, uh, that socket. And you might also want to specify the network latency. We can, we can uh, delve into this later as well. Essentially, mm, this should be uh, the latency, the one-way latency between your nodes. For example, if you know, I specify 10 milliseconds here because I will be running on localhost, which is fast. Anyway, depending on your network, you should, um, you should specify more or less how, how much it takes to send one packet from one node to another. This is used internally by Raft to decide when it should consider uh, the current leader dead, so another leader will step in. Uh, and that's it. That's it. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you have to join the cluster. Uh, you can use the DQLite Go client to tell the, the, the engine, please uh, uh, join the node. We don't join the node if the ID is one, because uh, node one will be the first node of the cluster. The cluster will have just one node at the beginning, so you don't need to join it. And the other nodes will just uh, try to join, and if uh, they fail, they, they just move on, uh, assuming that uh, uh, they joined it they joined before. We, we leave out error handling and stuff like that for, for this uh, demo. Uh, we register the driver. OK, this uh, is, uh, is uh, an important part. Uh, your the, the um, Golang DQLite client will have to know uh, the addresses of the nodes in your cluster. So in case uh, one node dies, the, lead, the current leader dies, it will connect to another node. In this case, we just uh, uh, hard code the list. But of course, uh, uh, you can organize your code as you want to. Uh, to know the current uh, list of nodes, uh, and you can wire it uh, when, you, when you build uh, the client. Okay, the, the total program, as I mentioned, uh, is uh, 132 lines of, uh, of Go code, and it has everything. So um, I will show how it works. So instead of uh, compiling this, program, I, I will compile the other one, and uh, um, 
as you see, the final binary is uh, less than 10 megabytes. Um, ah, okay. Anyway, this, uh, these are the shared libraries uh, uh, it's, uh, it's linked to. You can notice SQLite, of course, uh, and DQLite. And there are another few libraries, which are the dependencies of, uh, of DQLite, which are libuv, which is uh, uh, an event loop, uh, the same event loop, uh, loop uh, used by Node.js. So internally, DQLite is a single thread, uh, a synchronous uh, loop, event loop. And, and it uses uh, libuv just for, for footer proof uh, portability and it's also a very good library but it's a very libv it's a very thin roper under uh, around epoll on linux then there is a uh, libco uh, which is a coroutine library uh, if you're curious why we we use this it's a one file uh, long library um, adding support for coroutines and see if you're curious uh, uh, I can explain why, but it's not particularly important for, for now. And libraft, uh, which is uh, the raft library that we, we wrote uh, uh, as part of, uh, of DQLite for, for implementing raft. Okay, uh, we can start um, the first node, okay? And we can query it uh, like we did uh, with the other one, and it will return you the, the, the current uh, average uh, of the oxygen saturation. Then we can start another node, which as I showed you before, will automatically join that cluster that, that was uh, created by the first node, and uh, a third node as well. So now all the nodes are uh, online. Uh, and I can query them. So all of them will return the same value because the, the database is, is shared. So all the nodes see the exact same view uh, of the database. From their point of view, uh, it's as if they were talking to uh, a local database. All the consistency proper properties that you have with a local database are maintained. Now, if uh, I kill, uh, so in this case, uh, uh, the leader of the cluster will be the first node because uh, nothing dis disruptive has uh, happened so far. So the first node uh, noticed that it was the only one, uh, so it became the leader uh, since it was the only one. The other two nodes, when they joined, there was a, already a stable leader. They didn't uh, need to do anything. So if I uh, kill the, 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 the current leader, oh, sorry. Okay, anyway, it terminated. Uh, so what did I do? No sub job. Say it again. Ah, so it was two because I didn't I didn't kill the first one. Okay, thank you. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, the first node doesn't doesn't uh, um, reply anymore, but the other two do since they elected the new leader. They already had a copy of the whole thing. So uh, it's fine. If the, uh, the leader actually, the, the old uh, node actually comes back, it will immediately join the cluster. Uh, the data, the, it, it, it will connect to the, to the current leader, whatever was elected, and it will have immediate access to, to the current state of the database. And in the background, it, it will start to uh, replicate what was uh, missing. When, uh, we can do the same uh, exercise with uh, uh, 
with another node and uh, of course uh, it will fail uh, but uh, if we restart it it will be good uh, yeah that's that's it for for the demo so we'll just pause for for some time uh, before I, I delve into more details if you have questions already we can decide in, in which directions to go say it again reads don't go to consi through consistency so you're asking what is the consistency model essentially um, okay so a uh, cup theorem uh, not sure how many of you are familiar with it but put it simply in any distributed system uh, you have to, to make some choices uh, around consistency since DQ light is based on raft the choices that that are made um, are essentially consistency and um, tolerance to, to partition failures but consistency is there that means uh, in raft uh, um, reads are consistent if you make a read it will read the last the value of the last last write that means in terms of uh, uh, SQL if you have uh, a transaction if you use uh, SQL translations like we all know things will work as you expect so there's uh, acid semantics if you will because uh, the reads are served by the leader this is probably the, the, the point that should make you understand why the, le the reads are served by the, the leader so they always have the most recent uh, value um, it's possible to have reads served by uh, non-leader nodes so-called follower nodes for scaling uh, there, there is a way to do it uh, without sacrificing consistency so retaining exactly the same consistency property as uh, acid if, we, if you will uh, but it's not implemented yet in, uh, in DQLite. So for, for now, all reads are served by the, the leader. Does it answer the, the question? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I don't have ah, the microphones. Just can you dynamically change the number of nodes in the cluster as well? With yes. DQLite? So. Let's see if uh, we have uh, something. Mm, no, I don't. I don't have probably a slide for this. But um, yes, you, it's uh, the, the membership management uh, lately got uh, quite sophisticated. So uh, as as you saw, the, the, the membership management in the demo was uh, absolutely a toy but you can change membership dynamically uh, you can uh, say for example one example that we use in LexD I have uh, 20 nodes in my cluster uh, I want three of them to be voting nodes those are the ones that uh, uh, are critical for your data uh, you, you will survive to the loss of one of those nodes or you can have five voting nodes if you want to survive the loss of two then you can uh, specify the um, standby nodes uh, which are nodes that do replicate the data do write data on disk but they don't participate in voting so they won't be bottlenecks uh, as far as latency is concerned so you don't have to wait for them to complete their writes to reach the quorum that you need before you say okay this transaction is committed and then you can also have uh, uh, spare nodes which uh, are just part of the cluster uh, they, 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 they just sit there doing nothing they don't replicate data they don't uh, uh, participate in voting and there is an API to assign roles dynamically to all these nodes for example in LexD 
uh, we have that code. So, for example, when you shut down uh, a node gracefully, at least uh, uh, we transfer leadership to another node if the, the node was the leader. We uh, elect a standby node, which is a fast follower, to be voting, for example, to replace the voters, stuff like that. So there are advanced uh, membership management options that you can uh, use. Okay. Uh, I'm curious, um, the raft logs themselves need to be transactional, and I'm curious why do you, you didn't use SQLite itself to... Uh, sorry, I, I can't the, hear you. The, the raft uh, logs themselves need to be transactional, and I'm curious why you didn't use SQLite itself to persist the raft logs. Okay, uh, so the question is, uh, since the raft logs are transactional by themselves, why didn't you use... Uh, SQLite itself uh, to store to store them. Um, so when answer is uh, uh, like the logs in in Raft are are a bit simpler, uh, are a bit simpler data model than SQL first and also a bit different. Uh, the second reason uh, is uh, also performance. So you want uh, the, the, the two bottlenecks of Raft are the network and the disk, of course. So uh, everything you can do to minimize uh, those uh, paths, those hot paths, uh, is good. In DQLite, I, I probably have a slide for this. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, in DQLite, uh, as I mentioned, it's a single thread uh, engine. So it doesn't ever block. To, to, to do this IO, it uses um, a not very well known uh, uh, kernel uh, interface, which is uh, the asynchronous IO interface. The main system call involved here is uh, IO underscore submit for, for those who knows, and it doesn't block. SQLite, by default, it blocks. So for example, if, uh, if, if I have to write uh, the, the commit to disk, I have to block, do, do nothing else, in the meantime, uh, there's network uh, going on, et cetera, et cetera. The choice of going single thread, uh, there are many reasons. We, we can go through them separately, but I think this uh, at least answers uh, your question. Any other question? Okay. Uh, so I have a few more details. Um, uh, one important thing is uh, the... Excuse me, uh, I have a question. Ah, okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a, a bit curious about the need to use some uh, external library like libcoro. Uh, could you elaborate a, a bit about it? Uh, sorry, can, can you keep uh, the microphone closer? Yeah. Because... Uh, could you elaborate a bit about the, the need for the use of libcoro? Uh, no, the, the lib is not libcurl is uh, uh, libuv, I think you mean. This one? Uh, ah, libco, ah, no, sorry, libco, libco. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, so, libco, um, how many of you are, are familiar with uh, coroutines? Okay. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with it, um, in C, there is no, so a core routine is, is essentially a, 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 a way to do concurrent uh, computing uh, um, in a single thread. Let's keep it simple. So you have some non blocking uh, uh, part of code. It does its job until it can, because at some point it hits some uh, blocking uh, uh, job to do network IO or disk IO. Then that function or that coroutine uh, poses is still executing the same CPU, same thread, and 
it passes control to another coroutine, same thread, same CPU, uh, and, and, and the computation goes on. Uh, so it's a way to, it's a, um, coroutines are lightweight threads. You, you don't have to context switch, uh, you don't have to pay that overhead. They're really, 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 really good for networking. Uh, like a, a famous um, uh, web engines are, are based on, on, on this model, like uh, Nginx, uh, 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 HA proxy, uh, and stuff like that. So in C, there is no model for coroutines. You can't just uh, stop in the middle of the function and start another function on, on another stack, like, like out, of no blue, out of the blue. So libco uh, is a way to, uh, uh, it has some black magic depending on, on the architecture. It will save um, the current state of uh, all registers uh, and stuff like that, uh, all that kind of black magic, and it will transfer the, the, the program flow to, to, another, uh, to, to, to an entry point in another function. Why I need this? Uh, this is related to the other question, actually, because uh, SQLite is blocking. So um, when I reach the point uh, inside the SQLite code where I need to commit the transaction, instead of writing to disk, I have to ask Raft to do a commit, essentially. And that part is asynchronous in DQLite. DQLite is callback-based asynchronous. So there wasn't a way to stop SQLite there, just hanging for this without using threads. So I, I had to, to use the coroutine trick to, to do that. I hope that answers the question. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, speaking of which, uh, uh, the SQLite uh, version that DQLite needs is not the upstream one. It's a patched version for, for the reason I just mentioned. Uh, uh, not sure how many of you are familiar with, with the internal of, 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 of SQLite, but when, when, when uh, it comes to, to, to commit the transaction to disk, of course, it has an API for, for writing to the write ahead log. I put some uh, hooks in there, essentially, to, to call some custom interface that you can specify. In my, case, in my case, it's uh, the DQLite interface, so I can do all the magic. So the patch is, um, is very small. It's not a big one for now. And uh, I've been maintaining it for a couple of years now, uh, updating it at every release. And so far, I just rebase uh, the code. Uh, and I occasionally gets uh, trivial conflicts, but that's, that's it. That's a very stable part uh, of the SQLite code base, and the, the, the patch uh, is, uh, is minimal um, for now. I would like to grow the patch a bit. We can talk about it, uh, if you will, to, to, to add new uh, ways of, uh, of supporting replication, but uh, that's it. Uh, Probably you, you, you might want to know whether this is going to be upstreamed. Uh, the answer is uh, y yes, eventually, hopefully. <laughs> uh, SQLite um, uh, is a particular project. Uh, the quoting from, from, from them, uh, it's not open contribution. The project does not uh, accept patches. This is funny. Only 27 individuals have ever contributed to any code in SQLite. And of those, only 16 have traces in the latest release. Only three developers have contributed to non-common changes in the last five years. So it's not something like a, you, you push a pull request, pull request on, on GitHub and, and it gets uh, merged. It, it will be very difficult to get any changes in. So I will wait first when I'm absolutely certain that the patch will not change for, for some time uh, in the future and perhaps wait for DQLite adoption to hopefully raise and have some more arguments. Okay, we have a few minutes uh, left. Uh, if there are questions or 
I think we are done. We can five minutes more. So um, okay. So for now, the only language which is really supported by DQLite is is uh, Go, because LexD is written in Go. As I mentioned, when uh, your application talks to the database, it doesn't talk to anything local. It needs to connect to the leader. And when they speak, they speak a wire protocol similar uh, to Postgres or uh, MySQL. I didn't pick uh, MySQL or Postgres uh, uh, protocol for reasons. <laughs> this is uh, another topic. But there is a wire protocol that your client needs to speak. There is a Go client that speaks this protocol, but that's the only supported um, language. Um, if you want to, to support your own language, you will have to write uh, the client as, as for today, but the wire protocol is documented, and you can take a look at the Go one, for example, to, to have an idea how it works. It should be doable but we we would love to implement more clients in other languages but for now we didn't have time um, yeah yeah one last thing is uh, as i mentioned for now the way data is replicated uh, is uh, by transferring uh, uh, pages of the right ahead log of, of SQLite. Uh, that's, that's good and, and robust, but it might be too much. For example, if, you change, if, you, if your insert query just changes a few cells in the, in the B tree, so you, you change just a few records, that might be overkill. So I would like to implement B tree based replication. So uh, in, in the transaction, I, I just look at which, which cells were modified and I just uh, uh, replicate a logical representation of the change, um, pretty much like uh, Postgres does, I think, more or less, or even statement-based uh, replication. Those, those um, are way smaller payloads to transfer over the wire and to, to write on disk. It depends. Uh, this needs to be benchmarked because often it doesn't matter much if you transfer just a few bytes or a a full page because network and disk, but that's it. So, it's up. yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Free. <laughs> and uh, time for more questions. Are there uh, constraints in, step, in terms of uh, hardware or uh, architecture to, to run? Uh... Are there constraints in terms of hardware or? Or architecture. Architecture. Architecture, no. The only constraint is for now is the operating system. We are targeting Linux because of that uh, asynchronous uh, disk I.O. But that, that, that could be ported to other operating systems as well. But no, architectures. Whatever you want, we run it on ARM, we run it uh, on uh, S390, whatever. Yeah, whatever Linux supports. Uh, have you benchmarked the performance hit for the RAF protocol? Um, and what kind of extra latency does that add to queries? So, yeah, as I, as I mentioned, uh, uh, your bottleneck will be the disk and the network. So, the, the in ter compared to, to SQLite, SQLite needs to do a disk write. More or less, that, that's the same. DQLite needs to do a, a disk write on any node. That happens in parallel. So that part, you can expect more, more or less the same uh, performance as SQLite. The overhead will be one network round trip because you need to, to propagate the change and get an answer to, to decide that there's a quorum. So it's SQLite plus one network uh, um, round trip. That's more or less what we observed. So first, thank you for the talk. Um, uh, I want to do a question about um, asynchronous I.O. I'm not used to asynchronous I.O. in C, but in other platforms. How do you manage to, can you hear me? 
Berlin, Berlin. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, now yes, okay. better. How do you manage to perform blocking and unblocking operations using uh, Libsio? Do you have like uh, worker threads when you perform only the synchronous uh, blocking operations or? So the question is uh, how do you perform blocking uh, calls using uh, Libco? The, the thing is you don't. Uh, Dequelite does not use any blocking uh, um, system call. Say it again. Yeah, that, that's the reason why we use uh, Libco in the first place. When you enter the, the commit path of the SQLite transaction, the SQLite logic code will pose there, the registers will be swapped, and the, 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 the raft engine will run, so to speak. That code will, will slip there. Nothing else will, will happen. Also, the readers, uh, well, the readers actually gone in parallel, but other writer, writers will be blocked like uh, SQL. So SQLite will be frozen in, 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 that, in that particular spot in the SQLite code. So that, from the point of view of SQLite, that's blocking. But from the point of view of the CPU, I'm just swapping the registers and going on with something else, okay? Okay, time is up. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you.